All right, we are live. We are live. Well, welcome inside the horn. I am Zach Chapman alongside Gabe Bartlett here on a Thursday night hockey suburban East Conference rivalry between the Moundsview Mustangs and the White Bear Lake Bears. This game is technically a road game, but obviously the Bears know this rink all too well. And the famous words of Zach Halverson, the greatest hockey arena in the world. So Gabe, what do you expect here from the Bears and the Mustangs? Obviously they, the uh, Mustangs have a strong keeper. What do you think from the Bears, especially uh, building off of the win uh, against Duluth East? Well, White Bear Lake, they showed a lot of promise in that first game against Duluth East. They showed that even with their young talent, they can still score a lot of goals. They've got a solid goaltender in Jackson Conan who played it really solid last season. Or last season, I'm sorry, last game against Duluth East. He played really impressive. Get, you know, he gave up three goals, but, you know, all of them were very good opportunities by Duluth East. He didn't let any uh, slouchers in, so... It's going to be interesting to see if he can have another big game tonight. I'm assuming he's going to be the starting goaltender. And I think he is as I see him warming up in the net. And the name to watch for tonight for uh, for, for uh, Moundsview is... Uh... Well, Gabe Bartlett is being asked a question. Bears have taken to the ice. And now the Mustangs are on. Mustangs coming in with a record of 0-1-1. They tied their first game of the season in Bemidji against Bemidji High School. One to one was the score, and then they recently, this Tuesday, are coming off a loss to War Road of a score of four to three. And here they are to kick off their home session here at TCO Sports Garden against the White Bear Lake Bears. Well, I'm gonna finish my thought now. A guy to watch tonight for the Moundsview Mustangs is Johnny Conlin, number nine. He is just a sophomore, I believe, and he is incredibly gifted. He's their point leader on the season with four points in two games. I know it's only two games in, but he looks like he might be a young star. He's going to be their first-line center as well. He's a name to watch for tonight as, you know, although Moundsview may not have the best record of 0-1-1, they do clearly have a very talented player in Johnny Conlon. Yeah, along with Johnny Conlon, Matthias Duran also has four points. He's also their goal leader coming into this one with two goals. He's the only one to have multiple goals this season. He also has a pair of assists coming into this one as well. So those are the two key players for Moundsview to look out for. Along with Aiden Petrich, Gabe, uh, you saw him last year um, being with the Moundsview Mustangs. He's a, already a junior, but he's played uh, goalie position and started since he was a sophomore do you think him in between the pipes is going to be a factor in mounds view maybe well, he, stunning the bears here today well it clearly is a big factor because you don't start a goalie as a sophomore unless he is your best goaltender and he's showing promise and especially a team like mounds i know mounds doesn't have the strongest history it's been a while since they've been a really good team if they have a goalie they can build around as a sophomore that's going to be very impressive, and he is set to have a breakout season this year as a junior. And if even as a junior, if he has a pretty solid season, next year as a senior, he's going to be very, very impressive. Well, the Moundsview Mustangs now getting introduced as we also have a nice little squad. I don't know, squirt, mites, I don't even know. It looks like mites to me, not quite big enough to be squirts yet. And an interesting thing Moundsview does is they leave their helmets on the bench, sort of like a professional team does, all lined up, and they'll go get those once the once the game is going to start, probably after the national anthem. Uh, new coach as well for the Moundsview Mustangs. Either last year or this year he took over. I found that out the hard way, emailing the former head coach who had taken over in 2017, but Garrett Wendell leading this squad. And potentially a new look Moundsview Mustangs squad coming into this one against the Bears. It's always interesting when there's a new goalie or a new coach who takes over, if it's a different scheme or if they try to blend some of what the old coach did with the new coach. I think we're going to take a break here, Zach, for the National Anthem.
And we are now getting set for the opening face-off between White Bear Lake and Mount Zoo as the national anthem concludes. You know, Gabe, coming into this one, I did find a very interesting statistic about the Moundsview Mustangs. And everybody that has scored this year for Moundsview, they've taken a small amount of shots. And those small amount of shots, every shot has not been stopped. Each shot has ended up in a goal. 100% shot percentage for each of the goal scorers, each of the goal scorers for the Mustangs. Well, that's really interesting because that means that they're taking opportunity shots. They're not just firing the pucks at the net hoping that something slips. They're taking smart, calculated shots, whether that's getting set up in the offensive zone, passing, taking their time. They're trying a few different things, and that's really interesting because a lot of teams in high school especially, if they're not winning games, they tend to start throwing pucks at the net, just say, hey, you're our best shooter, just start taking shots. And clearly Moundsview says, well, we're going to take our time, we're going to get set up, and we're going to wait for the right shot rather than more of them. The starting five for Moundsview includes Wyatt Whitham, Johnny Conlon, and Matias Durant, along with Ivor Westerman and Sam Schulte. Starting goalkeeper is number one, Aiden Patric. And the Bears and the Mustangs are underway. Here from TCO Sports Garden. Puck early back into the White Bear Lake zone. Looked to play it across an early turnover, a shot. And it goes wide of Conan. Racing for it is O'Brien, he can't clear the zone. Mustangs looking to center, can't do so. And now racing the other way is Bishop. Bishop, cross neutral ice, hands it over. And into the corner it goes. Body start to tussle, but Bishop takes the puck away, looking for a pass down low. Couldn't get a shot off. That was Borkstead. No. It's Welch. Quick shot from Bishop. Blocker it away. And the puck now enters into the White Bear Lake zone all the way back to retrieve it is O'Brien. And then dumped in by Welch. And a line change coming for White Bear Lake. White Bear Lake, they started off really slow, almost gave up a quick goal. Now on the counterattack, playing a little bit more aggressive, not letting Moundsview get control of the puck in the zone. But, man, that was almost a really early mistake by White Bear Lake. Nolan Road now with the shot. It's in, and he scores. A quick goal for White Bear Lake. And the, just like that, the second shot of the game results in a White Bear Lake goal very similar so the JV game, from what we saw, the Bears able to get a quick start. Gabe and I were not here for the finish of that contest, but Nolan Road, first shot of the game for him, winds up in the back of the net, and the second line delivers for White Bear Lake. Well, the amount of times I saw his older brother Leighton take that kind of shot and score his, when I saw him play was incredible, and that was an amazing shot by Nolan Road. Put it high out of the reach of, uh, out of a very skilled goaltender and Patrice, and that's exactly what you want to do if you're White Bear Lake, start off quick. Huge hit in the corner by Olsen. White Bear Lake student section enjoys it as Nolan Road back into the zone, battling along with Mazarko. Puck leaves the zone, calmly being taken by Belial. Belial looking to play it up to Kotzmacher. And the Bears just end up dumping it into the zone as Matt Ol or Mitch Olson, excuse me, retrieves it, but a quick turnover and a shot deflected away by Patrice. Another White Bear shift where they kept the pressure on in the offensive zone, almost managed to score another goal. Again, they started off with that really bad turnover in their own zone. White Bear like answered really, really quickly. Icing right here, so Moundsview's going to get an opportune time right here to try to slow down this White Bear attack that really started off gunning really quick in this game. Bears will take the face off. It looks like it'll be Bishop in the first line coming back on for White Bear Lake. Probably wants to see it. Puck played along the boards. To Borkstead. Now given to Bishop. Welch will take over. 
Turns around, skating in his own zone, dishes it off. As he found Delaney, Delaney up ahead to Borkstead. Now back to Welch. Welch with a shot in just wide of the net. Trying to go high, glove side of Patrice. Now played up along to Whitham. But too far pass intended for Durant. And the Bears now looking to leave the zone. They will do so. Bishop looking to find Welch, but can't do so as it will end up going for an icing against the White Bear Lake Bears. Yeah, another chance right there for White Bear Lake. They're playing with a lot of speed right now, and this is what you exactly what you want to do if you're Tim Sager. You know, this is how they started off against Duluth East. They got a quick lead, and although they had a lot of penalties against Duluth East, they started off with that game ending the first period with a 3-1 to one lead, and that's exactly what you want to do right here if you're White Bear Lake, and... Zach, I think at this point in the Duluth East game, White Bear Lake already had two or three penalties. None so far, and another great chance right there for Moundsview out in front that they can't capitalize on. As Gabe mentioned, scramble out in front of the net. Luckily, no danger for the starting goalkeeper, Jackson Conan. And the Bears will exit the zone, being chased down by Nolan Road, who just a few minutes ago scored his second goal of the season. Played back, quick one-time shot from the point by O'Brien. Deflected and out of the zone, he retrieves. Some crafty stick handling there from Nick O'Brien to avoid the two rushers. That, that could have created an, uh, a quick odd man rush against White Bear, but Nick O'Brien makes a great play. Charlie Olsen now handles the puck, looking to just dish it out. O'Brien now skating back. Back to Olsen. Olsen looking to find Road. Ends up into the stick of Kotzmacher. And now Moundsview looking to counter. Being brought up by Westerman. Westerman halts, takes a shot. And gloved safely by Jackson Conan. Yeah, this has been a really quick start. Both of these teams not playing very physical, but playing with a lot of speed right now. I wouldn't be surprised if pretty quick here, Zach, we see an odd man rush or two for both sides. Both teams generating a lot of offense. And there's been a lot of goal scoring opportunities right out in front of the net. I don't feel that either one of these teams has played great defense in front of their own net so far. Another shot deflected wide, possibly reached Conan. Nonetheless, another shot heads on target. Padded Look. away, though, as it was deflected down. Conan making his fifth save of the evening as the Mustangs looking to enter back into the zone. It's dumped into the zone by Whitham. Retrieved now by Belial. Mustangs looking to dump it in the corner. They couldn't get the intended person the puck and now they race back in. Coming into the zone is number nine, Johnny Conlon. Somebody to look out for. Centering pass out in front, deflected away from the Bears and out of harm's way. There he goes again. Here's Conlon again with some crafty stick handling. Conlon continuing to try to create chances for the Mustangs. Instead, the Bears' defense staying true. Conan being strong as well in net as now Gallatin races back, plays it up along. Borkstead now retrieves, finds Wells. Wells races in. Can't find Bishop or anybody down low. Bishop now with the puck. Plays it up to the point. One time shot here. The fan on it though was Hinder. And now Welch in the corner behind Patrice's goal. White Bear Lake really playing a lot behind the net, trying to get something from behind and pass a puck out front. But Mounsu saying very disciplined, not allowing any cross passes to go right in front of their own net. Puck wobbling towards Patrice. He'll stick it up, play it up to his defender. However, it wasn't played cleanly by Olsen. Mustangs not able to get a clean entry into the zone. Hinderer gains possession. As he gets hit though, Nolan Road up to Charlie Olson. Charlie Olson had a fantastic evening against Duluth East with two goals. The only multi-goal scorer for White Bear Lake as the play gets whistled off sides. 
against the Bears. Well, we saw right there, Johnny Conlon. He's a captain as a sophomore this season. He is really quick, and he is a really good stick handler. Watch out for him. I, I know Zach it's early, but I'd be willing to, I'd be willing to bet if Moundsview is going to answer back, he's going to be the one to do it. Puck dumped into the zone by Durant. Retrieves back is Aiden Aikens, who plays it back to his partner in O'Brien. O'Brien can't clear the zone, though. Shot deflected. And Durant looking to get one on target, couldn't do so. Now Johnny Conlins plays it back. Up along the boards, it's taken away by O'Brien, though. He just saucers it up the ice, but deflected away. Bears just dump it in the zone. They'll have to touch up as the play otherwise be offside. One of the captains, Westerman, plays it up to his partner in Sam Schulte, who turns around and plays it back. Mustangs turn it over temporarily in the neutral zone as both teams scrambling for a loose puck before the Mustangs finally take it away. It's Schulte who will just dump it in. Conan stops the puck and leaves it for O'Brien who plays it up the long the glass. And now racing for it is number three, Kevin Laska of the Bears. Tries to deliver a hit. And almost a costly turnover in front. Laska was there along with Willett. I like, the, I like the setup right there for White Bear Lake. Get a puck out in front of that, try to get a good goal scoring opportunity. Wasn't there as two White Bear players both went for the puck and messed each other up, but a smart play right there. Mustangs leave the zone. Attack being brought on by Mitch Olsen, who will get a backhand shot on net. Save there from Conan. And now Bishop looking to race the other way. He's got Welch, it's a two on one. Here he goes, he's gonna take the shot, and well defended by Patrice. Bishop still on it before finally being cleared by the Mustangs. Goes all the way. It's going to go on target. And Conan will have to play it. Neglating and icing on the Bears. Oh, a dangerous pass right there by Grady Gallatin. Had Tyler Bishop wide open on the backside. But looks like it's going to work out right here. As White Bear Lake gets a clean entry into the zone. And Borkstead looking to get a nice shot on Patrice. But he fans it and the puck travels wide. And now the Mustangs dump it deep into their own zone and quickly racing in is Zhang. As Lucas Zhang almost a costly turnover and we have a whistle blown and it looks like a penalty is coming on the White Bear Lake Bears. With just under eight minutes to go here in period number one. That is Thomas Hinderer on the third line defense for White Bear Lake who will draw a penalty. Yeah, that's a, that's a mistake that we saw White Bear Lake make a lot last week. Thomas Henderer with the penalty. And we saw, I believe, they had five penalties when they faced Duluth East. And I know they killed off four out of uh, five of those, but you don't want to do that. You don't want to keep you don't want to keep another team on the man advantage for very long. Well, maybe to the advantage of White Bear Lake, Moundsview's power play between two goal ga two games has not been as successful as they would hope. Just one for eight for 12 and a half percent. It has not been the greatest. They've been great on the penalty kill, but we will see Bears looking to kill yet another penalty. They took six penalties against Duluth East and they have now added their seventh of the season. As the Mustangs looking to Develop a play into the zone. It's tapped in. Conan to retrieve. Risky play by Conan right there. Going for the puck when they when Mounsey had their entire team in the zone, but it works out right there. You know, I like the aggressiveness from the goaltender, but I'm not sure that you want him doing that, leaving an open net right there when Mounsey had three or four guys in the zone. Olsen sends one on target. Easily saved by Patrice. And now Schulte recovers. Plays it along to Conlin. Too many men on the ice. And we are going to get a penalty against the Mustangs. As Gabe mentioned, it'll be too many men. And we will be having four on four for 58 seconds. And then the Bears will get a minute and two seconds on the power play. That is a classic mistake by high school teams. So what happens is when there is a line change, the player who's getting on the ice is not allowed to touch the puck until his teammate has exited the ice. Right there, Mounsey's making a change. Whoever was getting off the ice didn't get off quick enough. 
and there was a clean and the sixth guy who's on the ice touched the puck before his uh before his before his teammate got off the ice. Luke Jean left wing on the third line will serve the penalty for Moundsview and we will have four on four hockey. Racing into the zone is Landon Mazzacco. Now played along to the right hand side of the board towards the Moundsview student section. Conlin now controls wind up shot deflected by Bishop. Now Wyatt Wilhelm controls. He's been on the puck for a while as he takes it out to neutral ice. He passes it along to number two, Ivor Westerman, one of the senior captain defenders of this Moundsview Mustangs team. Wiper now Lake. a turnover. Wiper Lake about to get on the power play in about three seconds here. They're going to have about a minute on the power play. And White Bear Lake is on the man advantage, but Conlin racing in, well defended though by Aiden Akins. And we are going to get another penalty against the Bears. No, there's no penalty. No. That was for offsides. They, they will, called that a clean hit. They will not call a penalty to the dismay of the Moundsview supporting cast here. At TCO Sports Garden is Nolan Rode races in, but the play is whistled offsides once again for White Bear Lake. Right there, the officials must have seen a hit happen, and they must have thought that the Mounsey player was stumbling and that the extra little shove by White Bear didn't make any difference. You know, I got to be honest, Zach, I, I think that probably should have been a penalty. I know that it was a little bit iffy, but I think in that situation, I think you got to give the to the side of the uh, to the to the side of the guy who's on the ice there. Khalil now controlling for White Bear Lake before he passes it to Nolan Road. Plays it up the left hand side. And Great now block shot right there. Puck travels out of the zone as Mustangs will be able to clear. And Mounds, you killed off that one-minute power play for White Bear Lake really, really quickly. And, you know, that minute went really fast. White Bear, I don't even think, had a shot on net. They didn't really get a chance to do anything right there. Whistle blown once again for possibly icing against the Bears. As Olsen not able to get it, his stick on the puck in a faceoff in the White Bear Lake zone. Bishop and Conlin, the two captain centers, will take the face off. It's won by Bishop. O'Brien rings it around the boards, looking for Welch, who's battling along with Mazzacco. O'Brien with the puck once again, looks to play it up along the boards, but can't clear the zone. Conlin with the puck now, takes a shot, padded away by Conan. From behind the net, it's Conlin who has been busy early for the Mustangs, looking to try to even this thing up as a shot off of the low pipe by Brandon Counts. And Conlon has the puck again here. What a rare mistake right there for a sophomore. Conlon with the mistake, and Borkstead able to physically get the puck out of the zone. Moundsview still controls, looking to race back into the zone, but... Not able to get e uh, even close to a clean entry as Welch brings it in for White Bear Lake. Looking to drive to the net. Well defended by Moundsview. And cleared out of the zone. Icing waved off right there as they believe White Bear Lake could have touched up easily right there. Delaney passes it up and they are going to say icing as the puck was touched by Willett. But Willett was a little bit behind the red line. And so we will go for, I believe that's either the third or the fourth icing on White Bear Lake now. And what's different about icing in high school than in the professional level is play, teams are allowed to switch defensively even after an icing. So not sure that they wanted to take an icing there, but sometimes it is strategic. Puck played into the corner. And now wrapped around to the right-hand side. Possible trip, nothing called. As both teams battling for it down low. Nobody able to come away cleanly. 
As it looks like Evan Streeter's down there as well. As Josh Hoover, as the Bears now able to exit and get into the Moundsview zone. Played along the boards, hard hit taken by Hoover. Delaney back up to Belial. Belial tried to get a shot on. It's patted away by Batrich. Puck travels all the way down to Conan, who will just play it cleanly with his stick. Belial dumps it into the Moundsview zone. Played along by Rain. But once again, the puck. Gal Gallatin tried to play it back right there. He thought he had someone behind him. Nobody home, so I feel like has to reset up a little bit here. Now the Bears with a chance. It's Kotzmacher, but can't get the puck cleanly. It was nicely defended by Moundsview. Nolan Road was with him as well. The Bears looking to create another shot, but not cleanly stick by Grady Gallatin. It leaves the zone and Moundsview. Now gives it right back to White Bear. It's Nolan Road driving down low, centering pass. And the shot is blocked as Kotzmacher couldn't get a clean shot off. And now it'll be retrieved by Gallatin. Races up, but Olsen will just tap it back in, down low to the Moundsview zone. Moundsview trying to race out. It's Conlin. Racing in, trying to take on four White Bear Lake bodies. It won't happen. Sadly, he is not McDavid in his eyes. As a shot on target, nicely done. As Westerman somehow got the shot cleanly onto Conan. And a great save. I don't know how Conan saw that, but able to get his right pad on it. And the Bears clear it down the ice for an icing. Yeah, sometimes for a goalie, you just kind of have to guess where the puck is going to go right there. Conan's screen went down to the butterfly, just hoped it wasn't going to get tipped, and it hit him right in the chest. Great play by the goalie, even though he couldn't see. Just over a minute to go here in period number one is a shot deflected by White Bear Lake. They race through the neutral zone before being taken away by Grant Dean. Dean loses the puck. It's Borkstead. Welch now battling along with Schulte. Conlon now racing in. He's got it was Dean, but it was deflected away into the left corner. Now played up, looking for Bishop. It's too far off the boards. Conlon will calmly race back and start behind his net, looking to develop a play. He's got Dean as well as Counts. And Mazzocco along with him. Conlin plays it up to Counts. Who plays it up to Dean O'Brien. Now with the puck, but the pass too far for Borkstead. And Conlin will dump it into White Bear Lake zone. Retrieved by Kotzmacher. That's going to do it for this period. White Bear Lake just going to kill this clock right here. And that will be the end of the first period here. White Bear Lake with a score of 1-0. to zero. Shots in favor of Moundsview, 10-9. to nine. One more shot on net for Moundsview than uh, White Bear, but White Bear Lake does have the one-goal lead. So after one period, the difference is an early goal from Nolan Road as the Bears lead the Mustangs technically on the road here at TCO Sports Garden. 1-0. That'll be it for us here from period number one. We will step aside shortly, but we will return for second period action here on The Horn.
Welcome back inside the horn. Once again, I'm Zach Chapman along with Gabe Barlett here on a Thursday evening that has been fairly nice so far. In fact, here at TCO Sports Garden, Gabe and I have both admitted it is quite hot in here. It is quite a toasty little area that we have. We are right under a heater, but you know what? It feels kind of good in here. It's a nice time to be in the world's greatest ice arena. Yeah, so Gabe, Nolan Road, top shelf, beautiful goal, kicks us off. But you were talking, what are you concerned about with White Bear Lake through their play after the first period? Well, I am a little bit worried about White Bear Lake in a few areas. The first one is they have been kind of soft with the defense right in front of their own net. Jackson Conan has made a few pretty good saves, but they are allowing Moundsview, especially their star player, number nine, to kind of do his thing and kind of let him roam freely. So if you're White Bear Lake, the biggest thing that you need to do right now is you gotta, or I'm sorry, the biggest thing you gotta do what if you're White Bear right now is shut down their star player. You cannot allow him to keep skating around you and taking free will shots at your net. Yeah, so White Bear Lake, Looking to head to 2 and 0, oh, send the Moundsview Mustangs to 0 oh, 2 and 1. We'll see if that will happen, but the captain, or at least one of them for Moundsview, Johnny Conlin, he's been busy early. He's had the puck multiple times, and it's clear Moundsview's trying to get him involved early. Well, Zach, one of the perks of you know managing White Bear Lake for four years as I did is I got to see some very great players play against White Bear and play for White Bear. And I can tell you, Johnny Conlon, he's legit. He has shown all the traits of a superstar player. He's quick. He's got great instincts. He's a really incredible stick handler. And boy, does he have a good shot and a great vision of the ice. He really does everything right. And he's doing all this as a sophomore. Boy, what he's going to be in the next few years is going to be, he's going to be something remarkable. And he already is. Well, we are set for second period action. Just like to give a thank you to our sponsors, Will Anderson with American Family Insurance. Mm -hmm. He was our first sponsor. He very appreciately has given us some great fun. Which as well as Pods Tire Car Care and Accessory. The scoreboard is brought to you by them. As we are underway here in period number two, as just like the first period, the puck will start in White Bear Lake zone, and exactly O'Brien will start with it as he plays it up to Borkstead, who will dump it in to the zone. And it's quickly played out here by Durant. Durant not able to move, advance the puck any farther than neutral ice. And now Bishop had quickly gotten his stick on it and was trying to center it, looking for one of his teammates, but can't do so. Puck. Back into the White Bear Lake zone. Fan shot, though, as Whitham, he had an opportunity to take a shot on Conan. Nothing will come of it. Bears now with players advanced. Played along by Welch along the board. He's got Belial back. Belial and Welch switch. Puck in front, and it's a quick save by Petrich. Now gather along by Borkstead. Borkstead looking to take a quick shot. It's high and off the glass. Played out to Bishop. Down to Borkstead. Borkstead looking to play it up to the point. It'll get to Belial. Belial controls. Plays it now down along the boards. But the Bears getting a shift. And now Conlin will advance it up to neutral ice. Yeah, White Bear Lake, they, they got a lucky break right there. Aiden Aikens did a little bit of break dancing in front of the goal and took away a passing lane as White Bear Lake's going to try to get an opportunity right here. It's deflected away and a score. Goal for White Bear Lake. Tyler Kotzmacher that. doing his best Nolan Road impression and going top shelf. That looked almost identical to how Nolan Road scored in the first period. Got the puck at the top of the circle. Spun around and ripped one on net, top shelf. Tyler Kotzmacher does the same thing as his line mate in White Bear Lake. 2-0, to zero. Zach, this period has started off almost identical to how the first period started. Yeah, even time-wise when the goal comes, very interesting. It's the second line that's getting the job done as well for White Bear Lake. They were successful against Duluthies too as well. Remember Charlie Olsen, he was a star in that game with two goals. 
As now Belial racing along with the puck. Olsen backtracks, dishes it along to Gallatin. Shot on wide of the net. Belial controls. Turns around trying to shake a couple defenders. Not able to do so. Back up to Gallatin. Plays it across the point to Kotzmacher. Another shot. This one padded away by Patrich. And now down into the White Bear Lake zone being chased by Dean. Loses the puck though to Olsen. But Olsen quickly turns it over to Streeter. Streeter though can't get past Gallatin. And now Belial looking to clear, isn't able to clear. Moundsview is still controlling in the zone before Road finally able to exit for White Bear Lake as it's dumped along and gathered by Schulte. Schulte plays it up and into the White Bear Lake zone gathered by Belial. Taken away and a shot out in front, Conan. Able to just stick it away. Dangerous puck in front. That puck sat out in front of the net far longer than any of the coaches for White Bear Lake would have liked that too. Luckily, there was no Moundsview attackers out there as they were on the other side of the ice, but that was a dangerous play for White Bear Lake. They got to clean that up. Westerman plays it up looking for Jean. Jean dumps it in, but now gathered and played by Laska, who plays it up to Delaney. Taken away in a shot there from Schulte. Puck down low. Moundsview doing a great job of holding the zone right now. They're keeping that puck behind the net, looking at the point for a one-timer. Hard battle out front right now. Between a few guys and a penalty coming. I believe, I think there might be a penalty coming against White Bear Lake for a cross check here. We will see who is the guilty party. Yeah, and cross check for, cross check by Michael Delaney, the football safety as well, who we talked about during the football season, gets penalized here, a starting defenseman and plays defense on uh, in hockey and in football, like his older brother, Tom Delaney, who's one of the coaches for the JV team at White Bear. Well, this is the second power play for Moundsview. They are 0 for 1 tonight. Coming in, they were 1 for 8, and they will look to try to get their second as a quick pass centering, looking for Dean, not able to do so. Well played by Alaska, and the Bears able to clear down the ice and retrieved now by Schulte, who will sit back behind his goalie, Patrich, and now play it up to Conlin. Conlin racing along the end boards, dumps it down. Going to retrieve is Matias Durant. Durant plays it up to Schulte. Schulte hanging, firing, and it's deflected by Bishop. Bishop. Looking to clear, just able to get it to neutral ice before Schulte able to recover. Now Whitham racing down. He's got Mazaka with him. And now a penalty again coming against the Bears. It's going to be a five on three as Patrich races back to his bench to get the extra attacker. Six on four for the time being. And the Bears are able to touch up, but now things get really interesting, Gabe as we are going to have a five on three for 44 seconds. Well, we're seeing the same thing that we saw them do against the Luthies. White Bear Lake gets sloppy. They make some mistakes in the defensive zone, and then they pl start playing undisciplined. And now they're going to have to suffer the consequences. As I'm going to watch Johnny Conlon pretty much this entire time on the power play, because I'd imagine with all this open space on the five on three, he's going to have a lot of room to do what he likes. Well, we will see as Nolan Rhodes set to take the face off. It is won by Rhodes. Belial looking to race along. Couldn't get it. And now the defenseman for Moundsview hold possession. It's Conlin at the point right there, number nine. He's going to take a one-timer here. And this one just wide of Conan, and the net is loose. As we all know the infamous net situation here as... 
it could be the friend of a goalie as it likes to jar loose at times well, that's you wanted to. Yeah, that time White Bear definitely did not want it to as they were about to clear the puck, and now Mounds, you can get right back set up here. Schulte back to Conlin. He fires again, but this one even wider than his first attempt. First penalty looking to expire here on Delaney. Ten seconds left. Conlin from the point. Dishes it along to Dean. The shot's up. It's played down. Played along. Conlin. Big save from Conan, and again another big save. And the Bears staying alive. It's now five on four shot from Conlin just wide. And it's out in a couple big saves from Conan. Brought to you by Will Anderson and American Family Insurance. And now Olsen with a short and a chance scores! What a penalty kill by White Bear Lake. Jackson Conan stands tall in his own net, makes some incredible saves, and then right there, Charlie Olsen, who comes out of the box, comes flying down the ice. To back up, they try to, uh, Mounds, you try to get set up, missed, whipped on a shot, and then Charlie Olsen gets the breakaway and puts a beautiful shot right below the glove of Petrich and White Bear Lake. That went from almost a disaster by the way that uh, that power play was set up for Mounds, you to the best situation possible as they get a goal on the penalty kill. Olsen's third goal of the season. He leads the Bears in that category. That is also, Gabe, the second shorthanded goal of the season. They did have a shorthanded goal last game against Duluth East. And the huge penalty kill. And then an extra reward as a penalty coming now against Western Man. Hit from behind on Bishop. And now we will have four on four hockey for the second time tonight. Of just a straight up frustration penalty by Moundsview right there. And he's trying to argue that he didn't do that, but that was a pretty clear cross check if you ask me. Bishop was going for the puck and it was a pretty clear cross check. And man, that's the second time that Moundsview has had a little bit of a dumb penalty on the power play is when that power play got going, they developed chance after chance after chance. And now this is the second time they've negated their own power play by taking a penalty. Both the number twos for both teams will sit as Gallatin waiting to come out of the box for White Bear Lake. And now Westerman will just have to shake his head and sit in the sin bin as Conlin now controls for the Mustangs, not able to get past the physical O'Brien. Conlin now centering, looking, and a centering attempt for Widham, but once again, he missed it. Widham has been struggling on getting some passes from his teammates as he drives along, being chased down by O'Brien. White Bear Lake about to go on the power play, only four seconds left in their penalty. And Bears now with the power play for a minute 20. Five on four, we'll see O'Brien controls behind his net, looking to play up to Borkstead, he will do so. Bishop out wide, he leaves it for Welch. Welch looking to make a move, tries to center it for Bishop. Bishop with a shot and it's just wide. Belial retrieves, fakes a one-timer, then takes his shot just wide. Patrice lost where it was. Belial gathers Welch into the corner to Bishop. Back to O'Brien, back to Bishop, down to Welch. Up to Belial. Belial looking to make a move in a shot, but well defended by Whitham. He's going to look to race the other way and kill some time on the penalty. Maybe even try to get a shot on Conan, but the puck just is easily swept away by Conan. Bears now in their own zone. Belial controls calmly, just under half a minute to go in the man advantage. Yeah, Belial tried to do a little bit too much in the offensive zone. They were all set up and ready to go. There was no reason to try to go right through a Monsview defender. It almost cost it a goal. Monsview had a good chance shorthanded right there as well. O'Brien controls from the point. Hands it over to Gallatin. Gallatin is shot now to Borkstead. Shot is deflected. It's in, and it's another goal. Borkstead is going to head to the Moundsview student section. And this one is starting to run away from Moundsview. It looked pretty even in the first period by a difference of one goal, but three goals here in the second, and it is 4 nothing. 
this has been the worst possible situation for Moundsview. They looked so promising on their power play when they had the five on three, developed chance after chance after chance, couldn't finish. Then they give up a shorthanded goal and then they give up a goal while they're on the penalty kill. White Bear Lake capitalizing on all their opportunities in this three goal period so far. It'll White be interesting to see who gets the credit for the goal. Borks it with the initial shot, but uh, that might have been tipped as well, or at least well screened. We will see the official goal coming I'm from our favorite Alex Westhead. And it was Brady Borgstad that was given credit for the goal. So it must have been, I think that might have gone off of a Moundsview defender maybe because it was definitely tipped. I definitely heard something. So it must have went off a Moundsview defender and in because as it, you know, can't score a goal on yourself and get credit for it, unfortunately. And a shot quickly from the point by Mazzocco, gloved by Conan. And we will have another faceoff for the White Bear Lake goal. As, yeah, it was clear the goal was redirected. You could see the puck change directions. But they will say Borkstead's initial shot is the difference. And now we sit at 4 nothing, and what is starting to be a blowout here for the Bears is looking to advance to 2-0 oh on the season. Both games here at TCO Sports Garden as the puck finds its way to neutral ice. Moundsview dumps it in. Played along now, centering nobody there. Conlin, or no, excuse me, that was Dean looking to create a chance for anybody. Nobody home though. Moundsview still able to put pressure on the Bears in their own zone before Bears able to clear. Olsen not able to get a stick on it, however. And it will go for another White Bear Lake icing. We're seeing it again. Moundsview is getting pucks out in front of the net. The White Bear defense has not been very strong there. They are just unable. To, there's just nobody home. I think we've seen it now it's like four or five times where Conlin or Dean has thrown a puck out in front and there has been nobody there. Moundsview could easily have a goal or two at this point if somebody would be in that, in that area. Well, we are awaiting... A face-off to be taken by Hoover as the third line is on. It's won by the Mustangs. Played up to the point. A slap shot by Westerman. Sticked away by Conan. Mustangs looking to get a puck up to number 22, DJ Coke, but not able to do so. Bears clear it down the ice once again for an icing. Yeah, another icing right there by White Bear Lake. They are really struggling to get the puck out of the zone, and now Sager's gonna, Tim Sager's going to send out his top line here with Welch, Bishop, and Borgstad. This line has been really, really impressive to watch so far this game, along with that second line with Rode, Olsen, and Kotzmacher. But this first line especially with Bishop, Welch, and Borgstad, they have been outstanding tonight. I believe they have accounted for three of the four goals. Like, Oh, no, my mistake, two, two of the goals. And... Uh Gabe accidentally stepped on the equipment. So good job, Gabe. We're all good. We're all good. As Welch controls in the neutral zone. Brings it up. Still with the puck. Takes a shot, but well wide of Patrice. Into the corner. It goes on a visibility. It looks like it's Welch and Bishop down low. Battling with Whitham. Now controlled by Dean out of the zone. Up to Conlin, he looks to make a move on Hinder. Shot high and wide. It's a big hit on Conlin. Puck now on the stick of O'Brien and a slip there. We'll get Borstrick a clean entry. He looks to go top stick shelf. Not able to get it cleanly on target. I like the look though. That's where he went for his goal that he scored. That was deflected but still was a goal. And now a little delayed offsides as Nick O'Brien got a little overambitious right there. Patric will play it up to Conlin who tips it, but nobody home. Instead it finds a stick of Olsen. And now a trip on Zhang and Lucas Zhang will make his second trip to the box. As the first one he went for too many men to serve it and now he goes for tripping and he is clearly frustrated. Well Zach, I'm kind of excited now. The last two times have been off another uh, penalty kill for Wiper Lake. This time we get to see them in the, in the offensive zone right away. 
we get to see a staple of Tim's, of Tim Sager's coaching career, and that's this power play. He sets up with an umbrella where you've got two shooters along the boards, one guy at the point, one guy down low, and one guy in front of the net. Sort of shapes it's shaped exactly like an umbrella. This has been a staple of his game ever since he became a head coach, and it's been very, very effective. Well, the Bears, they were 0 for 1 against Duluth East on the power play, but I believe this is number two for them. As they have, or number three, excuse me, they have been one for two today. As now a quick shot from Belial finds the glove of Patrice as he's able to get a big save for Mountview to keep this score 4 0. Save brought to you by Will Anderson Agency of American Family Insurance. We're going to have a little message from our sponsor as well coming up at the next intermission. So stick around and listen to that before you, you know, go get your snacks and do your intermission routine, whatever that may be. Mustang's able to clear down the ice to Conan. Conan plays it along the back wall and gives it to Gallatin. Now O'Brien. Leads the charge for the Bears, hands it off to Bishop. Bishop along the right-hand side will take a shot, this one wide, and travels all the way down into the White Bear Lake territory. Whitham able to gather the puck and get it to Conlin, who is now... Gets out muscled right there by Grady Gallatin, forced him to the boards. Borkstead now with the puck, shot deflected by the... Uh, Mustangs, I believe that was number 21. Michael Rain with the deflection. Gives White Bear Lake, though, a chance to get set up right here. Move the puck around a little bit. Wait for a good shooting opportunity. Gallatin back to Kotzmacher. Gives it to O'Brien. Centers it out front and a good chance for Welch. Just wide. Back up to the point for Bishop, who hands it off to O'Brien. Controls from the top of the point. Plays it along down to Bishop, who centers for Borkstead. But it's tipped out by the Mustangs, and they will be able to get a change here. Just 3.50 to go here. White Bear Lake up 4 nothing. Scoreboard brought to you by Pods Complete Car Care and Accessories. And that's going to end it for the White Bear Lake power play. Great work on the penalty kill by Moundsview. Even when White Bear Lake got set up, still managed to stay disciplined. Didn't allow anything to get to the net. Now racing in is Olsen, looking to try to create a chance. He's being uh, challenged by number 22, Michael Delaney. Michael Delaney, one of the people who committed a penalty for White Bear Lake tonight. It has played per pretty solid otherwise, other than that one little error. Streeter shot into the corner, and the Bears clear the zone. Westerman up to Olsen. And he loses the puck, and now Charlie Olsen finds Nolan Rode looking for his second goal of the game, isn't able to do so. Fairly easy save on the backhand. Chances a deflection there from Charlie Olsen goes high. Bears continue to put pressure on Cockmacher. The shot hits the glass, keeps play alive. And now the puck will leave the zone. And it'll be Delaney who will... Dump it back in as Bears will get a line change. Played up to number 11 Streeter who dumps it in and now will give Moundsview a change. Both teams, new lines as Belial races up. Looking to find a teammate, isn't gonna find one. Races behind the net, still controls the puck for the Bears. Gets hit by Rain and a shot from O'Brien from the point, finds the pad and glove of number one, Aiden Patrice, and we will have a stoppage of play with two minutes to go here in period number two. Well, it'd be nice if this third line here for White Bear Lake could get going a little bit. Willett, Hoover, and Laska, they've struggled a little bit tonight, but it'd be nice to see them maybe generate some offense right here and get their confidence up. Big hit from Hinderer along the White Bear Lake bench. As O'Brien now races up along the puck, dumps it to the right-hand side. Sager instructs his men to get a change. As now, 
being taken up. Great move, looking for a backhand shot, and somehow getting a shot off was Wyatt Whitham. He went between the legs, Zach. He put his, the puck was behind him. He put his stick between his legs and flicked it at the net. Luckily, Jackson Conan, he was uh, he stayed disciplined, stayed in position, didn't get phased. But that was some really impressive stick handling by Moundsview, I will say. Although White really does have the 4-0 lead at the moment, Moundsview has had a little bit more, a little bit better stick handling, I felt like, this game. They've been generating a little bit more opportunities like that. Yeah, Wyatt Widham coming into this game. I don't believe he has a goal, but he has two assists on the season. Looking for his first goal there as Borkstead now controls. Looking to get a shot off. It's deflected in front of the net. Now a shot deflected in and another white bear lake goal. What do you expect anymore? Period number two has completely turned the tide of this game from being a game to white bear lake. Aiden Welsh with an outstanding road. tip out in front of there. Good shot from the point deflected. It goes five hole. And I will say, Petrich tonight, Zach, although he's allowed five goals, I seriously don't think he would have been able to stop maybe, I don't think he's been able to stop a single one of these. These have all been legit, really good goals from White Bear Lake. One weird deflection, one good tip, and then three snipes so far. Not really much you can do right there if you're Petridge, if for Moundsview. Puck dumped into the White Bear Lake zone, and Moundsview at this point will have to feel content to just get in the locker room and regather. Looking to get some type of momentum and cut the lead down to four as Road now will go the other way. He's got Olsen as well as Kotzmacher. Road looking to get a shot. It's deflected by Schulte. Into the corner we go. Road battling with Kotzmacher as well. But out come the Mustangs with the puck. Half a minute to go. Period number two being retrieved by Gallatin. Plays it behind the goal a little quickly and maybe dangerously to Belil, but nonetheless, Belil able to control it before being taken away. Potential tripping, and they will call it. And the Bears, undisciplined throughout these two games. We've seen it. They had 12 penalty minutes in the first game. This is now their fourth penalty of the game, and it's going to be Belil, who has been strong on the ice for the Bears. He will head to the box for two. He looks frustrated going to the bench, a little bit complaining, but there's really nothing to complain about. That was a pretty obvious trip right there. Everyone in the stadium could see that one. Maybe just a little bit frustrated with himself, but uh, again, that's another little bit of a mistake from White Bear Lake. I know that Mounsey hasn't scored yet on the power play, but if you keep giving a team opportunities, eventually they're going to capitalize. Bishop won the faceoff against Streeter, and out to neutralize it goes. Streeter along the right-hand boards being contended by O'Brien, Streeter gives it up for a one-time shot from the point, and that'll do it for the period, as Westerman shot deflected and blocked away, and multiple goals here from period number two, nothing nothing from exciting. If you're a Bears fan, if you're a Moundsview fan, probably frustrated, as, as Gabe mentioned, this game going into the uh, second period here, it was just a one nothing game, shots were actually favoring Moundsview, Instead now Bears 19 shots to 17 in favor of White Bear Lake and they have a five goal differential with just 17 minutes to go. Yeah, one thing that Zach, uh, I know this is a little bit away, but if there is a six goal lead in the third period, the game does go to running time. But uh, White Bear Lake that time, they were just more opportune. They just took advantage of their opportunities. I actually thought for a good amount of that period that Mounds who actually outplayed White Bear from time to time in the offensive zone and generated a lot more opportunities. But White Bear Lake, they just took advantage of theirs. Pretty much every oppor scoring opportunity for White Bear Lake, they managed to score. Mounds you, all of their opportunities, either the puck would go a little bit wide, mishandled, or just someone wasn't out in front of the net. If Mounds you, though, can clean up these mistakes, they I don't know if they can necessarily make a comeback at this point as White Bear Lake's offense has been great but they certainly can generate some momentum and give White Bear a little bit of a scare in this third period coming up. Well, that will do us here for period number two, but stick around for a few minutes as we do have a special announcement from Will Anderson and his agency. I'm Will Anderson, uh, graduated from White Bear Lake High School in 1991. 
Played hockey for the Bears for three years. I was lucky enough to go to the state tournament my sophomore and junior year. My thing in American Family is I believe that customer service is a lost art form. You can buy insurance from a no number of different people and a number of different ways out there. If you're buying insurance online and you don't have a representative, I'd love to be that person. One of the things that makes us a little bit different is we always insure people the way we would want to be insured. So I start out with a very robust insurance package. I believe that your home is your number one asset. So you want to make sure that's very well protected. Most people would rather pay a little bit more to have great coverage. And that's what we do. We give people the options uh, for great, great protection. We're on Facebook, we're on Twitter, but you can call us, text us at 612-361-7283. That's my cell phone, 612-361-7283 or willandersonagency.com.
Welcome back to the Horn. I'm Zach Chapman alongside the one, the only, the legendary D1 manager, Gabe Bartlett, who retired. But here he is live. Oh, Division One, very generous, very generous, yeah. although love to love to say that I am, but not quite. <laughs> uh, anyway, Gabe, we are in a game that started off as a very interesting game, but it has gone into... Uh, the favor of White Bear Lake, it's not even close. Uh, in terms of goal differential, the shot differential is closer than the score right now, and it's 19 to 17 in favor of the Bears, but five to nothing. Bears have just taken advantage of their opportunities. Yeah, it's like we just talked about it during the break, and I said, I feel like this game could easily be five to three or five to four. Moundsview has generated a lot of opportunities to score. They just haven't capitalized. I mean, I've seen a few times where they've thrown a puck out in front of the net, no White Bear defenders, but no Roseville forwards. And, you know, that might be part of the reason why they're 0-1-1. They've really struggled, it seems like, to, to capitalize on those chances, whereas White Bear Lake, I would say they've probably only had six or seven scoring chances, and they've scored on five of them. So it's just about taking, making the most of your opportunities. That's the same at every level of hockey. I know the Minnesota Wild have a lead over the New Jersey Devils, and they're probably taking uh, advantage of their scoring opportunities as well. Yeah, rest in peace to Aiden Patrich's uh, goalie save percentage. He came into the night with 62 out of 68 shots faced that were saved. He had a goal against average of 2.78 and a save percentage of .912. Five nothing, that pretty much changed everything. Yep, tonight he has only stopped 14 shots, but I really don't think you can pin this one on him. I would say maybe one or two of the goals that were scored he had a chance to stop. But I mean, you know, what is he supposed to do again? The first two goals are both snipe top shelf shots. There's nothing he could do about that. You know, the, the fourth goal for White Bear Lake was deflected off a Moundsview defender and in. You know, nothing he can do about that. So really for him, he's just kind of, he's had a frustrating night because as a goalie, you want to be able to stop everything. And it just, it hurts them inside knowing that there's a shot that has gone in that they couldn't have stopped because they want to tell themselves that they can stop everything. We will see how the Mustangs respond to this. Down five on their home ice. Technically, this is also the Bears home ice. But a road game in the books for White Bear Lake as we are seconds away from starting period number three. As Gabe mentioned before we went into the intermission, one more goal and we go to running time here at the Sports Garden. Yeah, that's a, a high school rule that I know I have. I know uh, when I used to manage, there would be games that I was very, very happy that the game would go into running time as, you know, maybe I had something else going on that day or White Bear Lake was just playing so good. I just kind of wanted to, to go home because I knew they were going to win. And uh, and I know that the players that are on the winning team, they love it when the game goes to running time because it means they're playing so good that, that they're doing enough that the other team can't even stay in the game. And that's a confidence booster. And if White Bear Lake can manage to do that tonight, that will give them a large boost of confidence, especially going into the rest of the summer where they have some very big games coming up against teams like Stillwater and Hill Murray. Nolan Road got us. The scoring started. He has been joined by Kotzmacher, Borkstead, Olsen, and Welch, the latest goal scorer. And White Bear Lake starting off on the penalty kill as there was that penalty at the, the very end of the period. We are underway. Dean controls, gives it to the point. Now Conlin controls. Back to Schulte. To Conlin, who will rip a shot high and off the glass. It'll go right back to Schulte, who plays it to his left. To Conlin, back to Schulte, deflected him into the netting for a stoppage just half a minute into period number three. Well, pretty clear who Mounsey wants to have the puck while they're on the power play, Conlin. He is their best player. I've been mentioning his name all night because he really is a superstar. He has played outstanding tonight. Although it hasn't shown up on the scoreboard, he has produced a lot of opportunities for Moundsview tonight. White Bear Lake really hasn't had an answer for him, just hasn't been able to finish. And now Olsen races in along the left-hand side, takes a shot at Patrice. It is saved. And once again, we will have a stoppage. And I don't believe the game clock actually started. Uh, it's still at 16 minutes and 29 seconds. 
I don't even know then if the power play is that long. It says a minute 08, but interestingly enough, that's what it says. I don't know if it'll get changed or not. Maybe it was just that quick. I don't know. It doesn't look like they're going to change it. Well, we will have to change that at the next stoppage on the Horns viewing as Moundsview looking to chase out of the zone very sloppily are able to do so as Mazzocco races down behind the net. O'Brien looks to take the puck, can't do so. Jean controls. And the White Lake manages to clear again this power play for Mustangs. Only 30 seconds left on it. They haven't been able to develop many chances. Brought back in and a shot chance and just why Dean had the best chance or excuse me that was Matt Olson or Mitch Olson excuse me that's the second time I've said Matt I'm so sorry as Mitch Olson had the best chance for the Mustangs to try to get on the board instead Mustangs remain scoreless as now Welch chases the puck Looks to center for Bishop, can't get a clean handle. Now it's one-on-one -on -one hockey. Durant into the zone. And Bishop will poke check it back into Mustang territory. White Bear Lake playing very solid defense in the neutral zone right now, not even letting Moundsview in the zone. And even when they get in the zone, White Bear Lake has been managing to clear the puck really quickly. They're not allowing Moundsview to get set up and get any opportunities right now to start this period. Delaney plays it to Akins. Akins looking to play it back. He's going to lose the puck. And now Collier will win the puck. Down low he goes. But ends up losing it to Bishop who plays it up. Bishop, Delaney battling for the puck for the Bears before Delaney is able to win it, get it up to Welch. And Schulte able to get a deflection on it and it'll go into the White Bear Lake bench and we will have a whistle. Here with 423 is the correct clock. And the faceoff came in the White Bear Lake zone must have went off a White Bear Lake defender. So far this period, one shot on net for White Bear Lake and none so far for Mounds. You surprising considering they had a, a few chances on the power play, but nothing managed to hit the net. It is a great opportunity right there for number 24 for Mounds. I do not have my line sheet up at the moment. Yeah. Number 24, that is Wyatt Widham, the starting left wing. And now racing in is Brandon Counts. Not able to get a shot off. Defended nicely. By Borkstead, and now coming the other way is Laska. No saucer it down low. Played along the boards, and now Widham looking to change direction, taken away by O'Brien, and he will attempt to dump it in. It is played though with a high stick, as play will stop with Brandon Coates with a high stick. Situation you never like as a, as a defender. You hit it with a high stick and then you're not allowed to touch it or it's a face off in your zone. Nick O'Brien does the right thing right there. He's just going to leave the puck there and either is going to say you back off and let me touch it or you're going to touch it and we're going to get a face off in our zone in your zone. Yeah, Mustangs no time to waste. His clock winds down to the 13 and a half minute mark. 5 nothing White Bear Lake. Scoreboard brought to you by Pods. Complete car care and accessories is now puck played up to Durant and his shot deflected very high and way over the netting and into the top uh, side wall of the arena. And so a free puck, it looks like, to the Moundsview suit section. A bit of a souvenir right there. Moundsview with a very solid suit section tonight. Although since it is a Moundsview home game, they're technically supposed to be on the same side as us, but uh, I guess White Bear Lake just kind of took that one over. White Bear Lake trying to show that this is their arena. His road with a shot, looking for a second goal. It's blockered away by Pritchker, or Patrich. Road. Battling for the puck before being taken away by Olsen. Mitch Olsen plays it up to Matias Duran who dumps it in and now Belil will gather. Joe Belil races up along the boards. 
Gives it to Barkstead who dumps it into the White Bear Lake zone. Olsen gathers. And now Borkstead looking to chase for it, but instead Mazako gathers. Akins loses the puck temporarily. Delaney recovers for him. Back into the zone as Cowes controls. Welch trying to force a turnover. Welch to Porkstead to Bishop, but Bishop couldn't get a clean handle on it. Looking for a sixth goal today. Shot on Patrich. It's deflected out in front and then cleared. And now Akins will retrieve back with Delaney. Bishop with the hit along the wall. Puck is played in, but the Bears will have to touch up. Monsu trying to catch them on the change right there, but White Bear Lake's defense playing disciplined. Got out of the shift change really quickly. Doesn't allow anything. Doesn't allow anything. Hinder battling up with Dean along the boards for the puck. Now Whitham hands it to Dean. Dean shot deflected by Hoover. Hoover, along with Laska and O'Brien battling for the puck with Westerman. O'Brien and Westerman still battling for it. Puck now moves along to Willett. Hoover, down low in the corner, takes a hit, and now mounds view. Plays the puck up, Streeter. One on one with Gallatin, Gallatin just able to win the puck, but can't find Hoover. And now O'Brien controls in his own zone, plays it up to Kotzmacher, but it's taken away by Counts. Counts racing along the right-hand side. Heavily pressured by the Bears, and Belial will take it away as now a penalty coming. coming up against Moundsview. Kotzmacher looking to make a move. He'll still get a shot up, and it's deflected into the netting. Will stop play, but power play opportunity here for the Bears. Yeah, there was a long stretch right there with no whistle, but one of the things uh, I've noticing so far for White Bear Lake, they are not playing as much of the, the pressure in the offensive zone. They're trying to take control in the, uh, the center ice and neutral zone area. That's you know playing a little bit more defensive as they have a five goal lead. You don't want to get too aggressive and start allowing any opportunities. But now on the power play, you have a chance to make this a seven or a six goal game, and you you gotta you want to try to take advantage of this immediately if you're White Bear. It'll be the first line centers Conlin and Bishop for the faceoff. Bishop will get another faceoff win. O'Brien controls from the top of the point. Bishop now races to the right hand side. Dumps it along to Welch. Welch with Borkstead in the corner. Welch traps it temporarily, gives it to Borkstead. Now O'Brien back to Borkstead. And I can hear Coach Sager trying to get them to get the puck out front right here and a great opportunity right there. Puck nobody home though. Gallatin to Borkstead, it's deflected wide. O'Brien gathers for the Bears, plays it back to Bishop who gives it right back. Out wide to Gallatin. Gallatin to O'Brien. Back to Bishop. And now attempted back to Borkstead. It was deflected. Bears still able to keep the puck in the zone. And now a chance here for the Mustangs as it clears. It's going to be Widham looking to race. But Gallatin playing smart and great, great. defends Widham well. Great play by Gallatin. He just walled him off. And there's going to be a penalty against Gallatin now. A little bit of interference right there. Pretty, another penalty though. Pretty obvious right there. You know, I know players are always frustrated when there's a penalty, but so far all of the penalties tonight have been, have been pretty clear. And that I believe will be penalty number five or six on the Bears. That's six that'll match the Duluth East game. They've been very undisciplined between these two games in terms of taking penalties. I, I believe it's number five because I know they had the, the two in the first period that were one-on-ones and then they had the the two-man disadvantage. So I believe this is number five. And Duluth East, if I'm not mis mistaken, court on their fifth power play against White Bear Lake. So I guess fifth time is the charm if, if history holds to be the same. For the third time this evening, we have four-on-four -four hockey as 
A shot from Streeter. Couldn't even get close to on target. And now Joe Belil to Olsen who takes a shot. Deflected wide. Belil with the shot. He's going to try the wrap around. He's going to score. But a penalty is coming. It's going to be against the Bears. And you do not like to see this. Petra just down on the ice right now. And yeah, that was a pretty clear penalty right there. He, you can never hit the goaltender. And I don't really know why Charlie Olsen is trying to argue this. That, that's a pretty obvious penalty. He hit the goalie. It doesn't matter where the goalie is. He hit him. And Patric is still down. This will now be a four on three in favor of Mounds. That will be penalty number six. White Bear fans upset. The trainer originally was going to come on, but Patrice gets up now. And will just shake it off, but not the sight you want to see. Yeah, I think Charlie Olson was trying to argue right there that that he went, that Patrice cut him off, but it doesn't really matter. If you hit the goalie and knock him down at any level, it's a penalty no matter what. The officials gave an explanation to Sager. He agreed with it, and now no one's arguing. Westerman as well was giving a couple words. I don't know what he was trying to... And Mounds you now with too many men on the... Nope, and they're... I don't know exactly what the referee is... Something is not going well with Moundsview. Yeah, you can only switch during certain times, and Moundsview tried to make a change after the official had put his hand down. When the official has his hands up, a team can change. When that arm goes down, they are no longer allowed to change. Moundsview doesn't like it, but the rule's the rule. Shot on target, padded away by Conan. Now Schulte from the point. He Conan didn't see it, but it's going to go wide. Now Conlin controls, races in, and his shot a high. Conan, three sh quick shots faced early. And in about four seconds here, White Bear Lake about to be on a five on three as uh, Moundsview's penalty is all done. So a five on three now for Moundsview for the next minute. Whitham, left hand side, plays it to Schulte. Gives it to Conlin. Conlin, he's going to fire again. And his shot's blocked, and O'Brien races for it, and he will dump it down the ice. Bishop racing down for it. Patrich clears it away, and now Conlin racing back in. He's still on the ice. Now Whitham with the puck, but was temporarily on the stick of Akins, but he's not able to clear. Pinned along the boards by O'Brien. And cleared out of the zone once again for the Bears. Just 25 seconds to go here on the first penalty to number two, Grady Gallatin. 40 seconds left on the interference call to Charlie Olsen. Still five on three. Hockey's Whitham looking to race in. Hit from Delaney. Disrupts the play enough as the puck leaves the zone against Schulte. Being pressured by Roan to backtrack. Schulte. Great play right here by Nolan Road, keeping the pressure. And that's going to be enough to end the first penalty for White Bear Lake. Another 15 seconds, and now we will have a whistle and a stoppage of play. Just 17 seconds to go. Delaney getting in it down low. And two offsetting minors right here after Road and uh, I'm number 26 for Mounds. You had a little bit of. Uh, extracurricular activity going on after that play as they took a few swings at each other. Road confused why he's going to the box, but it'll be Matthias Durant and Nolan Road. They will get both a double both double minor here. Yeah, each with a minor penalty offsetting here. Road doesn't really know why, but Probably a little bit of frustration for Mounds. You know, when you're down 5-0, to zero, you're, you're frustrated. You kind of just want the game to be over, and a little bit of frustration there for Matthias. Just 10 seconds to go here on the Moundsview power play. We'll see if they're able to get one last push. Five seconds as Mazzocco races in, looking to get a shot. He'll turn away, and that'll do it. Five on three, once again killed by the Bears. As a quick shot for the point and a score for number 11, Evan Streeter. As a shot is finally taken 
past Conan. And this game is 5-1 with just under seven minutes to go. The Bears had just finished killing the penalty. And Streeter unlaunched and launched an absolute missile right there. Puck was sitting on it, but he wound up and absolutely clobbered that puck. Goes top shelf on Conan. Nothing you can do right there if you're Jackson Conan. But man, what a shot right there. Well, the five unanswered goals have finally been answered for Moundsview. Jackson Conan shutout attempt will not come today. However, Mustang's a long way to go in terms of trying to get back into this game. Or worst case scenario, at least a consolation goal for Evan Streeter. Evan Streeter hasn't gotten on the score sheet at all this season. That's his first goal of the season. Second point of the season with an assist earlier this year. White Bear Lake starting to play a little bit more aggressive. Even though they're up by four, they're playing a little bit more passive. Now they're getting aggressive again, and this is what worked for them before. But And another penalty against White Bear Lake. This is really, this has been another really undisciplined performance here by White Bear Lake. I know they've managed to kill off every uh, every power play that Mounties had, but man, this is really, really poor right here from White Bear Lake. As this is, I believe, their sixth penalty of the game now. This is number 35, captain. senior captain Nikki O'Brien taking the penalty. And it's just unnecessary at this point. That's the seventh penalty of the game for the Bears. And I, if you're Coach Sager, this is something to address after the game. More than likely, the Bears will come away with the win and head to undefeated. But very undisciplined is Bishop trying to race in the zone. But Mazzocco, a great defensive play. Yeah, White Bear Lake and Hyde. This, is, this will be their 13th penalty in two games. That is not good, and you are not happy with that if you're a coaching staff. They've had more penalties than goals this season so far. Shot wide to the right, off the glass. Westerman, one of the captains for the Mustangs in. A pass up to the point to Conlin, goes all the way down. And that'll kill some more time for White Bear Lake. Down to a minute 15 on the O'Brien penalty. Conlin, he's had the majority of the puck possession for the Mustangs today. Races in, dumps it into the low corner. Schulte chases. Hit delivered from Borkstead. Now Conlin with the shot deflected off the skate of Belial. Conlin back to Schulte. They'll regather. And now a shot off the right pad. Big save there from Jackson Conan. Brought to you by the Will Anderson Agency. American Family Insurance. Only about five minutes left of this game and about 40 seconds left on the White Bear Lake power play. Yet again, White Bear Lake's penalty kill has been really solid so far. Jackson Conan with another save on Conlin. 30 seconds to go, four minutes, 40 seconds to go here in period number three. Bears lead five to one. Brought to you by the pods, complete car care and accessory scoreboard. Schulte dishes it up along the boards to Conlin. Now gives it to Coke, Coke. That's gonna be offsides against Mounds Views. It was touched in the zone while and offsides, only 10 seconds left on the White Bear Lake penalty. And White Bear Lake, assuming that they don't give up a goal in 10 seconds, will be perfect 7-for-7 seven seven on the penalty kill. And I know that's a great stat, but if you are the coaching staff, you are not happy that your team committed seven penalties in one game. No, not at all. Especially from coach Tim Sager, who has generally had very disciplined teams in the past, but this start to the year so far has become very undisciplined. O'Brien jittery wanting to get back out there as his penalty has now expired at full strength once again for the Bears escaping yet another power play chance but racing in his streeter looking for a second but he's not able to get a good chance on net. And that was that was very close to being a hook right there on White Bear Lake. Managed to get a little more passive right there, but now White Bear Lake starting to get some of those jitters from getting so many penalties during the game. They're playing a little bit too passive and giving up some opportunities right now. But if you are Tim Sager right now, you are not pleased with these penalties. So far this season, White Bear Lake, 13 penalties, and they've scored 11 goals this season. 
I know that they've killed off all but one of those penalties, but man, if you were this coaching staff, you could not be happy about this. No, not one bit as Bishop will take the draw and win it and play it along the glass. Just touches into the Mustang zone before being brought out by Collier. He races along and now both teams battling for the puck along the left-hand side of the boards. Belil racing being brought down by Zhang Zhang now. Takes a hit from Bishop. Conan with yet another save as Bishop plays it along to Welch. Welch to Borkstead. Borkstead races along the right-hand side looking to find. It was Joe Belil who raced into the zone, but the pass just wide of his stick. Hops over as now Collier takes a hit for Belil. And Belil traps the puck and plays it along the center as Belil getting frustrated with DJ Koch. And Sager telling Belil to get off. He's playing a little slow and getting a little bit uh, a little bit extra right there. Don't want to commit another penalty if you're White Bear Lake. Clock winding down to the two and a half minute mark as we are now getting to the point where it's safe to say White Bear Lake will head to 2-0. and oh. The Mustangs will fall to 0-2-1. Oh, as the Bears looking to race along, still looking to play as it'll be Willett who dumps the puck in this time for White Bear Lake. Being chased down by Laska. Laska avoids a hit down low and now the putt the puck, excuse me, brought all the way back to the stick of O'Brien who plays it up to Hoover. Hoover loses it temporarily, but O'Brien's there to cover. Kotzmacher plays and it's deflected on a play from both Kotzmacher and Durant. Well, I wouldn't be surprised to see a line at some point here for White Bear Lake that hasn't played yet this season. At the varsity level of hockey, there's always a swing line on every team. And White Bear Lakes, theirs hasn't played yet. They don't play very often, but, you know, with a four-goal lead at this point, I, I, if you're Tim Sager, I think even if it's just one shift, that little bit of experience can help a team, can help out a line a little bit. Yeah, we will see. It's nice to get a, some fresh bodies out here. Maybe they'll be more disciplined than their varsity teammates. It'll be interesting to see, Gabe. Maybe you've seen it before in practices, but how do you think Tim Sager will address trying to get this team to find some discipline as this game winds down? Well, it, it's kind of a tough thing to teach. It's tough to teach a player how to be disciplined during the game. Really, for me, I think it's just going to come with experience. I think this is a very young team. They're still getting used to... You know, some of these guys are probably just played Bantam AA's last season or, or in, they played in... Uh, JV, so they're still getting used to some of these bigger and stronger players in varsity. So I think it's just going to come with experience a little bit. They're young, they're jittery, they're still trying to learn the rules maybe a little bit if there's differences. And so I think it'll just come with experience throughout the season. They'll start to figure it out a little bit more. Puck played along the boards by Aiden Aikens. And now Hoover plays it up to Willett. Zone isn't cleared. Schulte had a chance. Bears take it away, however, and now Kotzmacher plays it up in the air to find Willett. He had Hoover along with him, but nothing comes from that, and the Mustangs will dump it into the zone as White Bear Lake will get their second victory here at TCO Sports Garden. Time winding down. Bears have an answer to the lone goal for the Mustangs. It's been a quiet third period. As Bears have not scored, but Moundsview, the lone goal from Evan, Evan Streeter, excuse me, one of the senior captains on this team, finds the back of the net on Jackson Cohn. 15 seconds to go, and we have a whistle blown to stop play, which is 14.1 to go. Yeah, Devin Willett right there getting into it a little bit with a Moundsview player. Grabbed his, <laughs> Moundsview player grabbed his stick and wouldn't let go, and Zach, with only 14 seconds left, we're going to see the swing line for White Bear Lake coming out. Uh, Jordan Carroll, Jack Gabriel, and Vinny Vilea, I believe is how you, you say his last name. I'm sorry if I mispronounced that. But this line, the interesting about a swing line, they'll play two periods of junior, of uh, JV, and then they'll play the entire varsity game, and 
You know, they'll play kind of that first line role for JV for two of the three periods, and then they'll sit on the bench for a while in the, uh, in the varsity game. Well, that concludes this one. Jackson Cohn gets his second victory in net for White Bear Lake as the final score is 5-1 to one in favor of the Bears. Nolan Road, Tyler Coxmacher, Brady Borkstead, Charlie Olson, and Aiden Welch all get a piece of the action. But after five unanswered for the Bears here in the third period, Evan Streeter on a one-timer able to get a consolation goal against the Bears. And that is how this one finishes. Moundsview falls to uh, zero wins, two losses, and a tie on the season. What an entertaining one here from TCL Sports Garden. Thank you to our sponsors and Will Anderson and his agency, American Family Insurance, as well as car or pods, excuse me, complete car care and accessories. And Gabe, to wrap this one up, obviously there's many different things the Bears can fix on this one, but let's take some highlights and what are the good things that the Bears did today. Well, one thing that they did uh, exceptionally well that they also did against Sleuth is they finished their opportunities. I mean, they scored they scored five goals tonight in two periods. That's something to build off of. This team can generate offense, and it's not just one line doing it. They've got two very solid uh, lines, but uh, the, and also defensively. Uh, they play really great in the neutral zone. They take control in that center ice area. They don't allow teams to get anything going right there, even teams that are quick. One thing, though, a few things that I think they should work on, of course, one's the discipline. The other one is really in the defensive zone. They, they cannot allow so many pucks to go right out in front of the net uncontested. But really, if you're White Bear Lake, this is a very positive game. A lot of offense generated, and again, you don't want to take a bunch of penalties, but their penalty kill looks very, very solid this season. Overall, White Bear Lake played a great game and a lot of a lot of positives to take from this one. Some stuff to work on, but all the mistakes were fixable. Nothing that uh, nothing too bad. Nothing too bad indeed, and especially that mullet to your right, Gabe. How about that? And I'm not going to spin the camera over, but there is a young man that has the mullet of the year, I would say. So, you know, some fun stuff you get to hear here, here on the horn. So the mullet watch is on the mullet watch. Alert. I think, our, our, should we start that the rest of the year, Zach? The mullet watch? The mullet watch. Yeah, the players of the game. Let's do it. The mullet watch. Brought to you by that kid. Whoever you are. Well, that'll do it for us. The next hockey game will be against Stillwater here at TCL Sports Garden. Zach Halverson and Gabe Bartlett will be on the call for that one. Our next horn game in general will be this Saturday against uh, Centennial. Centennial. It'll be a doubleheader for both girls and boys basketball game. Uh, hopefully the boys basketball game uh, went well today too. Boys opened their season at South Campus, so best of luck to them. Hopefully everything went as planned. And we're excited for the rest of the year at the Horn. But for us this evening, that'll do it. I am Zach Chapman along with Gabe Bartlett. And thanks for tuning in to this special edition of the Horn. <laughs>